the lies, the endless, endless lies. They don't have any remorse, so they don't feel any true empathy for somebody else. I think all these split personalities that she has seems to be able to divide her emotionally to not seem to feel. She will in some instances display a lot of empathy and sympathy for her victims while she's lining them up for the fraud and once she's defrauded them her attitude will change completely towards them, she'll become aggressive and she will actually start playing the victim. A few houses away from here stays a woman who has constructed a fantasy out of her life. For the past 30 years, she has allegedly sown a path of destruction to get what she wants. I call her an equal opportunity con star because she has targeted everyone, old, young, rich, poor, black, white, everybody has been fair game. Luxury houses in Santon's gated communities have served as her film sets and hunting grounds, where she has allegedly lured, groomed, and scammed scores of victims. Her name is Tracy Morrison. She's South African, and she's 56 years old. In 1998, I had exposed this wannabe legend in her own time as merely a legend in her own mind. An imposter with a fake American twang, she had persuaded the mink and manure set of Johannesburg that she was a movie mogul from Hollywood, looking for investors in her new films. Just such an outgoing approach, saying she'd lived next door to Clint Eastwood, she had connections in Hollywood, she was flipping property. Earlier this year, I was contacted by a concerned mother who had been assisting her son, a young professional, to find temporary furnished accommodation in Johannesburg's affluent northern suburbs. And I came across a lovely advert um, and it was a very appealing advert of a house and it seemed to be a mother and a daughter who were advertising, but it was under the name of Gina Latham. And there were beautiful images of different parts of the house and it sounded like a lovely family. So let me pass on the number. Her son responded and soon met the so-called owner who called herself simply Tracy. He was blown away by her her charm, he said, I'm going to learn so much from her. Um, she, she's, uh, she buys furniture and she sells them and she buys them reasonably and I can go into business with her. Tracy showed him the website for Purple Chair Interiors, her interior design business. The contact person was again her daughter, Gina Latham. He did not get to meet Gina Latham, her daughter, and that's something that really, really puzzled him. By then, he had paid the deposit, but became suspicious. There were so many like little things that were bugging him. He researched pur Purple Chain Interiors, the business, or he found out that there were stock art images used. Her son confronted Tracy about her dodgy credentials and demanded a refund of his deposit. She went crazy. She went crazy at him. He kept on getting emails from Gina Latham saying, um, I'm, I'm, I'm not at work yet, I'm getting to work on Tuesday. When I'm in the office in the morning, um, I'll organize your uh, re deposit refund. Janine began to research Tracy, whose surname she still didn't know, and her daughter, Gina Latham. She went onto the Hello Peter consumer website, where she saw shocking reviews of a Tracy Morrison and her previous company, Penny Place. In the email that she'd written to my son, Gina Latham had written to my son, she said, shame on you and that had those that phrase had stuck in my head when i looked at the hello peter review on the 22nd of january there was a um, a reply to all the the messages um about the penny place and 
don't rent from Tracy, da 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 da. All these people had written things, and then there was a couple of reviews. Then one was Natasha Worthington, the other was Gina Latham, and saying, Tracy's done amazing work in my home, and I can't believe that all of you can say these things about um, Tracy. Shame on you. I discovered that Gina and Tracy are one and the same people. Yes. And she not only has Gina as her, as her other name, she has numerous other names. Since December 2017, Gina Latham had advertised homes on Gumtree 41 times. Morrison's other alias, or alter ego, was Natasha Worthington, supposedly her PA. People with this problem have of being able to live in two worlds sim simultaneously, two moral universes, um, a reality and a constructed reality. So, for instance, if they were to get into trouble, they would construct a story to explain what had happened. And in a very short time, that story would become their reality. And anyone who confronted them with the reality would be lying. So what are some of Morrison's alleged scams? Impersonating an FBI officer, but we'll get to that one later. Defrauding people by coercing them to invest in bogus businesses. Pretending to own upmarket homes and subletting them as house shares, keeping the rental for herself and withholding refunds of deposits, thereby defrauding both her landlords and housemates failing to pay staff and contractors despite undertaking to do so. I think she wanted people who were perhaps going through a little bit of a difficult time. She also tapped on people who she could easily mould, perhaps who were financially able to become a part of her web, but then also manipulate and break them down. This young woman was one of Morrison's former housemates. I found her on Gumtree. It was very close to my work, as it's in Sandton, so that was a plus point. I made contact with her. Obviously, she asked to tell a little bit about yourself. That way, finding out more about how vulnerable you are. Janine has since set up a WhatsApp group for Morrison's victims, and they meet sometimes to give support to each other and to compare horror stories. Most have requested anonymity. And this is one of the Santon houses Morrison pretended to own that she advertised to share with young professionals. They say she became abusive, her behavior bizarre, and her moods extreme. There were rules, but you weren't aware of it. But as soon as you trespassed, you were put in, in your place. You were, you were so terrified. I was terrified of doing anything. Didn't want to touch her stuff as she goes from zero to, to extremely crazy, angry in a second. She went into their bedrooms while they were at work during the day. She rearranged their clothes. She took things out of their room that she wanted for herself. She invaded their privacy. She invaded their space. She, she wanted control over everything. She wanted to possess them. Her strategy was in the house to divide us all and to rule exactly and also to plant ideas so that we do not connect with each other, not become friends, even though we live together. In fact, Morrison's behavior was allegedly so manipulative and abusive that her traumatized housemates sometimes fled in fear after only a few days or weeks. The verbal abuse was crazy. One night she swore at me so much, the next morning I said, I'm leaving. And then, you know, starting to inquire about my deposit, I'm realizing I'm not gonna get it back. And Morrison assumed the persona of her fictitious PA, Natasha Worthington, to avoid refunding her young housemate. Natasha would say, it's been done now. Um, everything, my new side was Natasha, not Tracy. So all the blame was, you know, Natasha couldn't get to this. It was, the systems were down. I, I think they've been so hurt in so many different ways, um, not only financially, um, some small, some hugely financially scarred, but emotionally. I'm going to party, I'm going to go. 
Back to back victories for Bong Musa Ntembo, his second down run victory. It was very emotional, you know. Uh, I've been putting a lot of work on, the, on my training. I'm very happy. Boys is amazing. Just completely unexpected, just a dream come true. We're on our way to check out some of the mansions that Morrison pretended to own and the web into which she allegedly lured landlords and housemates alike in order to defraud them. With me is SABC cameraman Mangoba Nkosi. Our route traverses Bryanston, Morningside Manor and River Club, all of these suburbs located within the municipality of Santon. First on the list is a palatial home in Bryanston, number 53, Westburn Avenue. We're now approaching one of the luxury homes Tracy occupied between July 2011 and August 2012. She operated one of her businesses here called Honey Your Home and eventually she was evicted after owing the landlord something in the tune of 240,000 Rand in arrears. The landlord eventually sued her and although Morrison indicated she was going to defend the lawsuit, she landed up defaulting on payments to her own attorney to the tune of almost 8,500 Rand. Between 2012 and 2018, Morrison occupied at least half a dozen homes, pretending to own them and advertise them as house shares with a rapid turnover of housemates. And at that point, the rotation of her housemates was so frequent that she should have installed a revolving door just to keep track of who came in and who left. In fact, the landlord of this house in Calvin Drive was allegedly so outraged by her that he removed the driveway gate. She said it broke. Apparently the owner of the home came and removed the gate. So she would tell me the next morning she's very tired because she heard something. So she was patrolling the property with her gun. According to several former housemates, Morrison often bragged about owning a gun and even implied that she might shoot them, accidentally of course. <laughs> then there was 11 Cedar Avenue. There, Morrison hosted tequila parties as well as raunchy bachelorette bashes replete with male strippers where she always got in on the action. The property was managed by Marissa Daniels on behalf of the owners who lived overseas. They had agreed that Morrison could stay there rent-free for the first two months if she repaired the house. But Morrison allegedly reneged on the agreement. It's quite a nightmare. At one stage I was covering the rental, the bond, because there was a bond on the property. Right. So that the bond wouldn't bounce. I finally got her out the end of July and all the things that she said she was doing and paying for and I was paying for she didn't do. We have incriminating evidence from about 20 of Morrison's victims who in total she allegedly scammed out of millions and this was probably just a fraction of her victims. One of the most cruel cons she allegedly pulled was against a young family she had befriended. She she portrayed herself to be an honest open, good friend, like there to listen to you. All personal, interpersonal interactions are manipulative and they are people who use interpersonal reactions for their own benefit. They exploit people. She told us that she'd been a part of the FBI. Um, from there she'd been, from what I understood, recruited to South Africa to be part of um, a, a special force of some sort in, in Johannesburg. Um, she also mentioned that during all her, her exploits, she'd been shot, I think, three times. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it 
was the depth of stories. Yeah. That's that's what sold it. Is you kind of think, sheesh, you know, clearly you've got to have done this because the amount of detail. They almost are chameleons. They adapt their fraud to the individual they're targeting. So they will meet with people or they will, they will come across individuals and they will see what that person needs and they will structure that fraud specifically for that person. So that person, it's far easier for them to part with their money because it seems like a match made in heaven. She knew that Bryony cannot, will not, could never allow anybody to think poorly of her or to have a bad opinion of her or mm -hmm for her to feel like she's not helping enough. And Tracy picked up on that to a T. She, that was, that's, that's awesome. how she got Bryony. They have an incredible capacity to read other people and there are two or three steps ahead of the people, their victim. I knew that she was a stronger personality and that's how she'd gotten Bryony to for lack of a better term, follow her the way she had. Um, but I didn't realize where we were heading. Friendship was not what Morrison was after. She wanted Bryony to invest in her bogus business and even offered her a partnership. She said she was tired of her partner not helping her and getting all the return of the the money she would rather give it to someone that um, wasn't a fat cat this is how she liked to call her partner or call rich people and she said that she didn't want the large amount of return that was coming to go to him she wanted to buy him out quickly um, and she said that I could then take that share pay off um, the remaining of the buy-in with that share. In so, her words, that was helping out a friend to make some money. Yeah. So to help us out as friends. She lives this high life. She makes you see, you know, this m money, this how she's living and how amazing it is. What you don't realize is that's your money. She's taking you to lunch to have sushi with your money. And you're like, Oh, thank you so much for paying. It's so lovely of you. And now you just feel like an idiot. Morrison also persuaded Bryony to invest 20,000 Rand in a bogus consignment of furniture, promising massive returns. The deals would cost the young couple 180,000 Rand, funds that were supposed to go for their children's education. So that's probably the hardest thing for me to swallow, is the fact that Nick gave me that money to to do something with and I could have done something awesome and she just didn't care. I think we just want on the Tracy perspective for her not to be able to do it to anyone else and to get her come up and, and have something happen where she actually realizes that she's been caught out whether it be a jail sentence or, or whatever the case is. Um, but on a whole, just to make people more aware. SABC News can reveal just how easy it is to buy explosives used in these robberies. The very worrying factor is that very few arrests have been made. Sia Kolesi comes out. Skipper number 61 for South Africa. The first black South African captain. With her pseudo-American twang, and tales of how she had bedded and wedded Hollywood A-listers, 
Tracy Cavell Morrison wanted her victims to believe she belonged to Tinseltown royalty. But the origins of this alleged fake stargazer were far more humble. She grew up in Yeovil, Johannesburg, and although her married name is Morrison, she was born Tracy Bogart in December 1961. She has three siblings, a sister and two brothers, and her widowed mother Penny now lives in a retirement village. Morrison supposedly renamed one of her businesses after her mother. If I was her mom, I'd be devastated to know that her daughter's named a fake business that she cons people and kills their dreams and, and takes children's school fees. Um, as a mom, it's heartbroken. There's been instances of people committing suicide because they found out that they've lost their entire pension to a Ponzi scheme or an investment scheme. So for me, a fraudster is no different to a murderer. They destroy families, they destroy lives, they break up homes. Morrison claims to have had a tragic life, the victim of domestic abuse at the hands of her husband, a violent American policeman who murdered her son. She was a police officer, obviously, there in America. Her husband had shot and killed her son and had shot himself but had survived and was then taken to hospital um, and then was in, in prison. And she was a bit upset because he was going to be released soon. Although there seems to have been some real tragedy in her life, it was far less melodramatic. According to family members, she was a teenage mom whose child died mysteriously at the age of three. Tracy was a teenager. She fell pregnant when she was a teenager. So we think that from then she's been psychologically unburdened. The way we see it in psychiatry is that it's a combination of, of certain inherent factors which are partially genetically determined and plus environment. Clearly there's something that's wrong with the wiring of the brain. Special assignment has uncovered the docket numbers for at least eight charges of fraud against Morrison from as recently as May 2018, going back as far as 1987. Most of the charges were laid at Santon Police Station, which serves all the suburbs in which she has lived for the last 13 years, yet she seems to have continued her cons with impunity. I find this quite bizarre because she's known to the authorities. She's known to the authorities as having been a con artist in the past. She's known to the authorities as having multiple cases opened against her. A Windeat company search has also revealed that since 2009, she has registered four interior design companies. While they might have started out as legitimate businesses, from the documents provided by scores of victims, they evidently became vehicles through which to conduct ongoing fraud. Her new website, My Gingerbread House, consists of identical images to those of her previous company website. And these are also stock art images. But Gina Latham has been removed as the contact person. We called the number to confirm that it was Morrison up to her old tricks. At My Gingerbread House. Info at My Gingerbread House. Yeah, for the attention of Marsha. Um, my name is Tracy. I used to be the owner, but she's the lady that's taken over, so I'm now doing just the guest houses. Okay. In April this year, we partnered with IRS Forensic Investigations to catch her out. She was again advertising her landlord's home as her own and looking for housemates. An IRS agent fitted the profile of the young housemates she tended to target. I emailed Tracy. Uh, responding to one of her ads, um, posing as an interested potential tenant. Um, and we moved from email to WhatsApps, um, but she told me unfortunately that there had already been someone who had taken up the offer, but that she could perhaps help me or find someone else who could help me should I need it. Did she communicate with you as Tracy or Gina? She communicated with me as Gina. With the assistance of her then landlord, who had already laid charges of fraud and forgery against her, we decided to pay Morrison a surprise visit. She was not happy to see us. The allegations against you are a mountain. So what I mean, you're like, 
carve up the places that you rent and pretend that they're yours and then sublet them and take deposits from young struggling professionals and then either abuse them so badly while they're living here that they actually run out in terror and then forfeit whatever they're owed by you because they'd rather just get the hell away from you rather than face your abuse or else you take deposits and then conjure up some excuse not to return them. What, how, what, what, what kind of morality? Okay. This makes me angry because I see here what you're doing in this house. I see how your lies, but I'm allowed to live with people. No, not if you're renting. You cannot pretend to be an owner of a house that you are just renting. And legally you cannot sublet, but that's the least of your crimes. What you're guilty of is taking money under false pretenses of conning people into investing in businesses that do not exist. Ponzi schemes to all intents and purposes. The only difference between you and Bernie Madoff and Laurie Schneider, who was called the Ponzi princess, is the scale of the con. But that is what you have been doing. Your modus operandi is identical to all those big con artists. Things that you've been getting small change compared to them. She was saying you've been living a very quiet life until yeah. when? And then, and well, until the business started doing really badly. Your interior design business. Mm. The thing is we don't have any proof of is that the company even exists. The website exists. Anyone can put a website together. You've got pictures from Google. We match them with images from Google. Why would you do that if you have a real business? I didn't put the website together, but does it matter? But Jean is the contact person for the website. Yeah. Where does Gina live? Cape Town. Where in Cape Town? I have never been to Cape Town. Uh, but you should know where she lives in Cape Town, surely. Uh, but I'll get you the information. I'll get it from her mom. Will you, where does her mom live? Where does her mom live? <laughs> I'm not sure what the name of the suburb is. Uh, okay, um, I think you're getting tripped up now. No, no, no. Um, I, just, I don't know. I just would prefer to just speak to counsel and get some advice okay. and meet with you guys again. Where do you get these aliases from? But no. Are you looking at me straight in the face and telling me Natasha Worthington is actually a real per person? Yes. You are lying. I'm not lying. Natasha doesn't exist. Gina doesn't exist. Impersonating an FBI agent. That I have no and idea. What about you know, the I fake was... American accent that you just uh, dropped <laughs> oh, really into don't. recently? <laughs> what part of what we're telling you is true? What part do you actually admit liability for? I just want to speak to somebody. And, and, and she's, I guess she's entitled to do that. Unbelievable. We contacted the lawyer Morrison had said was her counsel, but he insisted she was no longer his client. On April the 14th, Morrison was arrested, but two days later, she was released and her case was thrown out of court. We are determined to investigate why. Well done, see that works just fine. Hey baby, and thank you for helping. Mwah, love you. Uh -huh.